HC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 2. And in this episode of our season with Time Majeski's number 60, not iRacing Ford, we are going to be completing race 16 of 33, which is going to take place at Kentucky Speedway for the Alsco 300. In the last episode, I basically had to read out what happened at the Firecracker 250 at Daytona brought to us by Coca-Cola because I sadly forgot to stop recording game footage before exiting out of the game, and then I lost all the game footage. So, that really sucked. I promise I will not do it again. Just wait, I'm going to break that promise because I suck so freaking bad. Also, this weekend we are going to New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Overton's 200, which is going to be race 17. And uh, honestly, I think Kentucky is going to go better because Kentucky is a 1.5 mile track and New Hampshire is one of the toughest tracks in this game in terms of competition. Maybe I'll get a hang of it this time because last time in the truck series we in here and uh, Tyra was really killing me. Uh, I need to get a grip at this track because what if is good in this track and I'll be as good as good as freaking what if because what if is amazing. He's my senpai and we should go ahead and take a look at the point standings now. Justin Allgaier won at um, Daytona International Speedway, now has three wins, is at the top of the point standings and because of that he's also at the top of the playoff standings. So we're in third uh, tied with him and Elliot Sadler for three win drivers or whatever you want to call it. And uh, we are ninth place in the point standing. So at least we're in the top ten. That's all nice, but let's try to make some progress this weekend and maybe make it to eighth or seventh. Let's go ahead and get to the racetrack. If I'm correct, this is going to be a night race. It is daytime right now, of course, but I'm pretty sure the race is going to be at nighttime, just like the last one was in the truck series. One thing that I would really like to see is some day races at this track. I don't know if that's actually a thing or not. I mean, there's a night race here in the cup series and there's a night race here in this series and we don't come back to this track I'm pretty sure um, I could have sworn they had some day racing at this track whenever it first they first brought into the cup series and whatever but no I just I just really would like to see the variety of day and night at this track in specific I mean they can there's nothing stopping from having a day race here is there let's go into qualifying you know we can do qualifying now because it's not a super speedway like freaking Daytona or Talladega one thing that we should take note of, whenever this game first came out, the apron was above the yellow line. I don't know why. That was uh, one of the weirdest things yet. And they fixed it. They got it where it was supposed to be. It's under the yellow line now, so there's not that much to worry about in that sense. And I'm pretty sure whenever I first started LPing this game, whenever I did the truck series, the apron was still above the yellow line. Or at least I assume it was. It's been a while since the truck series. But as we go off turn four, we're going to start our first lap of qualifying here. Let's give it our best shot. Uh, be steady on turns one and two. From what I remember in uh, online racing, the middle lane is what's best here at Kentucky Speedway. But if you want to pass somebody, you kind of have to dive low if you want to actually get underneath them and all that. Turn one and turn two wasn't too bad. Trying to get down to the right speed here. We're drifting up the track, but we'll finish the corner. A little tight. I haven't been able to qualify in the top 30 in a really long time in the series. What do we get this time? 33rd. Well, I mean, at least we're on the inside. That is really good, but, I mean, we're closer than we usually been. Uh, Ryan Reed on pole, William Byron third. Uh, I think I said Elliot Sadler is me starting in fourth, and I saw uh, Justin Allgaier is in the top 10, so those are our main contenders right now. And I always have to start in the back of the field, but Justin Allgaier is me starting in sixth, and uh, I guess that's the rest of the... The qualifying results. Sometimes words just don't want to fill my, my brain and just fly out my mouth. I mean, I can't make the words. I hate English language. I hate all languages. All languages suck, in which we could just all remain silent and make nothing but boring YouTube videos. Anyways, Green Flag is out. We're underway for the first stage of the Alsco 300. It's going to be four laps. Uh, the inside lane and the outside lane aren't really going anywhere, so I guess I had my own run. We're going to find a way around him. We're going to dive underneath him going into turn three here. Steven Light is going to have to move up the track because I'm making it three wide. Well, as long as we're on the inside, we can probably make up quite a bit of ground. But, I mean, I can't do that if they're blocking me on the inside. And I have to find a way underneath him before we go into the corners. Okay, I'm going to make a pass on the inside here. For some reason, Smithley did not even feel like moving Ben Kennedy up the track so I can make a pass. He was just going to sit there and uh, make it a really narrow entrance. But we're getting there. We've only got four laps. We've got to make this uh, time worth it. We've got to use our time while we have it. I don't know what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, we're gonna get underneath Joey Gase off of turn four. I just looked at my computer because I just finished rendering the 4x4 Evolution video that came out yesterday. You, you know, and I'm recording videos on the freaking PlayStation 4 and then stuff is happening on my computer in the meantime. I, I'm progressive. We just keep on making passes on the inside. I'm not going to bother trying to go to the outside and figure it out because this is good enough right here. Okay, underneath Ross Chastain for 22nd. Next time by, we have one lap in the stage. One lap left in the stage. Okay, oh my goodness, don't hit Keselowski, JC. Let's see if we can get ourselves a finish in the top 20 here, even though we're probably going to lose all 20 of those positions because of pit stops if we're taking them after this first stage. And I can't get the inside to block Keselowski. Okay, we're good. Uh, well, we're in the top 20. I think the best we can get in this situation is 18th from Daryl Wallace Jr. We're going to dive underneath him into turn three. You saw me coming. I'm trying not to hit the apron at the same time. Come on, come on. As long as we get the runoff, we've got it. We've got 18th place at the end of stage four, stage four. Stage one. There were four laps in stage one, but that was not stage four. Good job. Commentary is just always spot on with this guy over here. Okay, so pit stops are not happening, happening after stage one. I hate this fucking language. William Byron won stage one, so yeah, he's still consistent. Wish he could get more wins, though, because that just really hasn't been his biggest piece of cake right now. I don't even know what I meant by saying biggest piece of cake, but okay. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like my commentary was fine on 4 by Revolution, but that game just ruined my potential. It ruined my momentum for recording videos for the day. And I've still got to record another NASCAR Heat 2 video today, so screw me. Stage 2 is going to be 5 laps long, 1 lap longer than the other one. Also, because we finished in 18th, we got to start on the outside. Uh, but we're going to get a runoff. I still need to find a way to the inside. Just got to wait for a gap. Maybe we can get one here. If we can get a run. Find. There we go. Oh, don't hit him. Don't hit him. Whoa, back of the car. Got a little loose there. That's nice. Okay, this was Jeff Green. I was trying to use him to get a draft and pull in front of Daryl Wallace Jr. So we're on the inside. We can get back to making progress again. I want to see if I can finish on the stage this time. Because last time we made up, like, how many positions we made up? Like, 20? Not 20, we made a, uh, I don't know how many positions we made up last time. I think it was, yeah, it was 15 positions we made up. We make up 15 positions this time, we can wind up finishing in third, but of course the leaders are better, so I just want to see if I can get into the top 10. Jeff Green, you just aren't going anywhere, and you're, you're in the way of my driving line. Uh, we would have probably gone a little faster into the corner if he wasn't there. We're not making that much progress right now. Plus the tires are probably a little long at this point. Dang it, they don't move going into the corner. They just, if I get underneath them, they just kind of sit there. And they don't give me the room needed to not crash into them. It's all my fault anyways. No matter what it is, it's always my fault. So I should just take the blame up my ass. God dang it, Matt Chip. Okay, I'm sick of this shit. I'm going to start pushing people out of the fucking way. Because I'm, I'm getting a little pissed off. I can't make a pass. I have the momentum every single time. But there's always just a car sitting in the way. Or how they're taking the corner affects my chances of getting actually past them. Past Ty Dillon there, past Jeff Green, and the 19 right here of, is that Daniel Suarez? I think it is. Yeah, because Eric Jones has the 20 car. And the underneath, uh, Harrison Rhodes in number 01 car, which will get us 12th position. It took us that long just to get those spots. I'm kind of doubting the chances of us actually finishing the top 10. I don't know what the hell is happening up there, but uh, is that Ryan Reed? Yeah, that's Ryan Reed in the 16 car. He's having engine troubles, and he's actually holding up this guy on purpose, apparently. <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. He was holding up that guy on purpose. I'm not sure what that was, though, but it was one of them red cars with the yellow number. We got a lot of cars that look like that in this series. So we're in 10th place. We might be able to get in 9th before the stage is over. I just wanted to finish in the stage. In the stage points, whatever. Get out of the way. Um, turn your car. Fine, don't turn your car. Is that going to be a caution? Yeah, it was a caution. They didn't throw a caution because he bumped into the wall and didn't want to turn his car. Just because I drove in the back of him does not mean that he can't turn his car. People drive in the back of me all the time, and that doesn't happen to me, so I don't want to hear no bullshit. Uh, William Byron and Elliot Sadler are pitting, but the laps remaining, 16. Estimated fuel, 7 laps. I'm going to go down pit road just like those other geniuses at the front of the field because, you know, I have a brain. Repair. Um, 
no, we don't need a repair. We're going to get two cans of fuel, four tires, just like always. And we lost 30 positions. Ryan Reed just got a DNF. That was predictable. I feel bad for whoever the hell it was that was behind him. I'm guessing it was Mike Carmen because that was the guy who was in um, 37th place or whatever. Actually, no, because Mike Carmen's car is not up here. Um, I don't know who the hell's car was. It was just red and yellow. I, there's a lot of red and yellow cars, like I said. So, Elliot Tyler, William Byron, with, along with me, are at the very tail end of the field, and they can't go anywhere because all these guys who have not pitted yet are in front of us. I, what the fuck is happening? What is this? Why didn't they pit? They can't make it. They're going to pit under the green flag, meaning only three cars are going to finish on the lead lap. <laughs> uh, all I got to do is get around William Byron, Elliot Tyler, and we're going to win this race. God dang it, this game is just giving wins away to me now. Elliot Sather and William Byron are getting held up by these guys with horrible freaking tires and shit. I mean, once all these freaking morons are off the track taking pit stops, then William Byron and Elliot Sather will be up to full speed. I don't know how much of competition they're going to be. Oh my god, look at William Byron go in the mirror. And yeah, their cars are still just as fast as mine, it's just how they drive them. Now I gotta worry about these guys getting down pit road under the green flag. I'm just like all in the middle of this. Uh, maybe I should go to the outside because I could pass everybody up there. Here comes William Byron on the bottom. I'm going to go to the outside so I can avoid these guys attempting to get down pit road probably at some point. And it said seven laps. Ow! What the fuck, dude? Goddamn 86 car? I don't know what the hell that was. I mean, I was obviously on the outside. Oh, my God can't take the stupidity. It's such an easy competition to beat um, William Byron over there, but not whenever Charlie Brown's dumbass is just pushing me into the outside wall. Don't do it again. I see you moving up the track constantly. Get the fuck out of the way. You're pissing me off. And now apparently he's having engine troubles or something because he just slammed the brakes in the back stretch. William Byron is getting away because I'm running the outside trying to avoid these guys. They're going to be pitting at any moment. Still just scattering, honestly. I'm looking up ahead and it's just spreading out. We can win this race. I know we can. I'm running the outside for my own sake, but it's not paying off because they still haven't started pitting yet. Where's Elliot Sadler? I mean, they're really Byron. I don't know where Elliot Sadler is. I'm in a three wide situation because I'm tired of trying to run the outside lane because these guys won't start pitting. Maybe I made. I should have made some car adjustments and made the wedge a little looser. That might have helped. Well, here goes one car down pit road. I think that was Blake Cook. I'm not sure. Well, if he's starting to pit, then I'm pretty sure quite a few other people are going to be pitting this time. Finally, pit stops again. Uh, apparently, they're, not, they're just going to decide not to pit until they really, really freaking need it. That's, that's so stupid. Like... That defies what this game actually is. Oh my god! What the fuck? Joey Gase! Joey Gase! What did you do that for? You fucked up our race! Now all those guys are gonna have fresh tires at the restart. Joey Gase just dive bombed the corner and crashed into William Byron. I barely avoided the wreck. I suppose I did. Ugh. Oh. I don't know whether or not I want to pit in this situation. Uh, I think I'll, I'll get better results if I just don't pit and have the lead after all this. Actually, a few people still stayed out. I guess these are people that were pitting a few laps ago. Uh, fuck you, Joey Gase, you stupid cunt! <laughs> these people got to pit right then and there. They got their laps back or something. I don't know. Maybe they weren't a lap down yet. And they had taken their pit stops before that caution came out. They came off pit road and hadn't gotten lapped. Or however it works. Or maybe they pitted earlier and were in front of us. I have no idea. But Elliot Taylor's here. William Byron's here. Oh, he made the race interesting. I'll give him that. But What the hell? What was that? He didn't even use his brakes or let off the gas. He just drove straight into the corner and killed William Byron. Well, I say kill, but I'm exaggerating, obviously. And now I'm on the outside because my car is very stiff on its tire wear. I'm going to have to make this work some way if I want to win this race. I, I think I can win this race. We've only got two laps to go next time by. 
I need to get to the inside. There's not a gap at the bottom. God damn it. This outside lane is just not working for me like it does online. I, I can't imagine how the inside lane is so much more superior. I mean, on, on, I race here online. The middle lane is um, the superior lane. Getting off the gas, I get to the inside. Okay, keep it to the inside. That's just all I need to do right now because apparently middle lane is not working for me. Never has. I'm hitting the apron. Get out of the way, Ty Dillon. I just can't get in. Yeah, we can't win this race. It's just not possible. We get better results this way, but I think we're going to get better results as if people just all went down pit road like they were going to. But nope. Uh, Joey Gase had other plans. Everybody's got to run me. Everybody's got fresh tires. and I, I, I can't accomplish shit. I thought I was going to be able to finish in front of William Byron and Elliot Sauer. I'm not going to finish in front of either of them. Oh, Brandon Jones pulled a side job on Ty Dillon or something pulled up in front of him. It's the last lap of the race. We got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead against, I think that's Eric Almarola and um, Harrison Rhodes, maybe. My car cannot turn, and here comes Michael Annette again. Okay. I'm very, very pissed off and salty about Joey Gates right now. Okay, we're turning Joey Gates tomorrow. Like, like all out. He's going to hit the outside wall so fucking hard. I'm, I'm pissed. So, Eric Almarola won the race. He was battling it out with um, Harrison Rhodes, I believe. And that guy finished in third. Blake Cook got second place. Ryan Reed, of course, he had engine troubles halfway through the race, and he finished 18 laps down last place. We got ourselves a ninth place finish. I feel like I could have done better, but I was stuck on the god darn outside somehow. I just didn't have that much grip at the final restart. Elliot Taylor finished in first. William Byron, I thought he finished in front of me. He finished in 16th, so I don't know what the hell happened there. And uh, those are the rest of the race results if you would like to look at them. I mean, I can't even look at them if I want to because they keep on skipping through them, just like they always do. These, these asshole race results. That's something I would like to see in NASCAR Heat 3. Or maybe an update before that game even comes out for this one. Just to be able to control the race results and all that crap. So we're ninth place in the point standings still. Didn't exactly make very much progress. We just finished in ninth place as well. Uh, to think that we almost won this race, but Joey Gase. I don't even know. Here's that post-race information right here. Ty Dillon ran the fastest lap with a 31.66. Yeah, he was up front towards the end. William Byron led the most laps, leading 13 laps, but I guess he just had a bad restart coming to the end. Uh, we were, of course, on the move. Started 33rd and finished 9th. Yeah, we're almost always on the move. And Ryan Reed started on pole and finished in 40th. This race just went completely opposite direction he expected it to, didn't it? Tomorrow we are going to New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Overton's 200, which is going to be race 17 of 33. Really looking forward to the ass ramming of Joey Gase and his number 52, whatever the hell that car is sponsored by. <laughs> I can't imagine why I'm so pissed whenever William Byron is the one that should be so pissed, because William Byron was the one that got wrecked in that situation. And he hit him sideways, he was sliding across the outside of the racetrack, bringing smoke out of his tires, which is probably the reason why he had such a bad restart, finishing in 16th, like you saw a while ago. But next weekend, we've got Indianapolis for the Lily Panties Patties Diabetes 250. I, I can't tell what the hell that says right there. This text is too small. And then after that, we've got some race at Iowa again for race 19. Yeah, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. But, um, yeah, I have no idea what the hell that what this race is sponsored by because I can't read it. And then I can't read this one because th there's nothing there that doesn't tell us what that race is sponsored by. Why does Iowa have sponsorship problems in this game? Okay, you can take a look at the point standings in full. Justin Allgaier is still at the top. William Byron is in second. Elliot Sadler in third. And uh, you can look at the rest of the stuff. Ryan Reed is in sixth place after getting that DNF. We're in ninth, as you just saw a while ago. Um, wh where is this... Uh, Hothead, stupid ass. Joey Gase is in 27th place. Yeah, that, that was totally worth it. That was really worth it. And we were right around that area in the position in the field, too. So he's been consistently horrible in terms of performance this season. So, yeah, I hate him now. I hate him for the rest of the season. Fuck you, Joey Gase. And here are the playoff standings, which um, really aren't that different from the uh, point standings now that things are kind of starting to sell out. We've got our winners. We've got our drivers that are being consistent. So yeah, I guess you could say that it's really not that different from the point standings. At least that's what I would say. Well, see you next time. That's that. 
and episode over.